Hello everyone, this is Jay Grimokind, and I'm here with another tutorial, except this time is for a different program than the one I've used most often. Instead of a Vroid Studio tutorial, I've decided to do a tutorial for the program Live2D, which is another popular resource for uh, virtual streamers and YouTubers uh, for use making avatars that can be rigged to follow their own facial expressions. Now, the difference between uh, Vroid and Live2D is, unsurprisingly, that Live2D models uh, tend to be just completely 2D and only have the illusion of being 3D through uh, image manipulation in the program. Now, Live2D models are visually impressive. They're a little easier on your computer than 3D models, so if you don't have a powerful gaming computer yet you want to be a VTuber, it um, can be a little easier for your computer to handle a live 2D model as opposed to a 3D Vroid model. Um, and some people may just prefer the aesthetic of a 2D character to a 3D one. However, live 2D models can be incredibly complex to make, especially if you're unfamiliar with the program. And while I am 100% for supporting artists and making a fully rigged, complex live 2D model is definitely worth the money. Um, commissioning an artist can get very expensive. And if you have the budget for that, then by all means go ahead, but I imagine not everyone can afford to purchase or commission a full live 2D model. Now, so I've decided to give a simple tutorial on how to make a live 2D model with the free version of Live2D, as the uh, pro version gets very pricey. And um, this is not like the, the best way to make a model. I'm not going to claim that. And the model itself will be fairly simplistic. However, uh, again, it will work with the free version and it will not take you very long to make. Now, first thing you need to do is actually have the images for your model done. Now what you need to do is draw your character and separate each, as you can see I have my layers here, separate each sort of part in a different layer. And I will show you each part as you should separate them. Please note I am doing my sort of avatar character here, who is a cat person who wears a beanie. Um, I will include that in the tutorial in case you also have a character with cat ears or wearing a hat. But just note that you can you can just ignore the parts where I talk about the hat or the ears if your character does not have them. Now, in your model, you should have the back of the hair, the body. Some also separate the neck, um, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I won't be doing that. Then you need your head. Something I like to do is do the base color of the hair lineless, so in case there's a gap in the hair, it does not like give you a bald patch. The nose, uh, sort of if your character has like hair on the side, do that on both sides separately. Then the center bangs. I did the back of the hat separately, then both of the cat ears, and then the sort of rim of the hat. Then the Solera, or whites, they're the red in this character's case, of the eyes. Do them both separately for right and left. The irises, again, do them both separately from like right to left. Do the lower eye line, again, separated. Upper eye line for the other eye. Both brows, still separated. The mouth closed, and the mouth open. Now, if you are not an artist, it's okay. Um, you can commission unrigged live 2D models from various artists that will draw an avatar for you based on your specifications and separate everything as it's meant to be separated in the file. Or if you have Clip Studio Paint, which is the program I'm using here, Clip Studio Paint comes with an array of 3D models you can use for your art. And so technically, you can simply take one of these models, you can find them over here, uh, underneath image material, 3D, character, there's three, or four, 
apologies, characters here, uh, two male, two female. And, well, I definitely don't condone, like, tracing. It's to never trace someone else's art, of course, but I don't necessarily condone tracing these models, even though you're allowed to, because I feel like that sort of prevents you from learning properly how to draw. However, I understand completely if you just want to get this model done quickly, you don't really care about perfecting your art skills or anything, you just want to get your 3D model or <laughs> live 2D model done as quickly as possible without worrying about like like future art or anything. You just want this one model and you want it done. And so that's completely acceptable. So remember, remember the parts you have to separate and make sure each part is one layer. So you can't have like the line art for the hair and the color separately. You should draw it like that, but then combine the layers into one image and export it as a PSD file. This is the file type used in Photoshop. However, most modern art programs that support layers also support PSDs because they will maintain the layers, whereas a PNG or JPEG will flatten it all into one image. And that's not what we want. Now then, when you open up Live 2D, and the version I'm using is Live 2D Cubism 4.003, although this should work on any version. All right, and then you see you find wherever you saved your PSD to, and you just, oops, you just drag and drop. You see, you create new model with PSD file. It'll take a moment to load, and there you go. All as you left it. Now your first step, just get this out of the way in the beginning, so if you forget to do it, cause some problems, is this button up here for the texture atlas. Essentially, this will be the, um, the internal sort of information about like what images your uh, model uses. What you should do is automatic layout, and it'll make sure there are no, there's no overlap. Whoops. Then you just click OK, and it will be saved. And then you have your texture atlas. Now then, these are your parameters, and these are your parts. First, we want to organize all of your parts into their appropriate folders. Keeping everything in folders is technically not required, but you're better off if you do it, because it makes things much, much easier for yourself. Now, do the mouth. The mouth, you put in both your mouth open and your mouth closed. And in this folder, you do the browse. Put your eyebrows in there. And essentially, you repeat that for every single part on the face. But I will show you how to best organize it. And you do your eyes. Put them in there. You see, if you click on these little arrows, you open it back up and see the individual parts. They aren't disappearing when you put them in there. They are simply inside the folder now. And something that is not required, but I like to do, is to put the irises in a folder together, as they will be often moved together. And now, here's a quick thing I can show you. In most art programs, the layers are fairly straightforward. It's whatever items are on top are on top. However, with Live 2D, you actually have a little more control over what images show on top of others. So allow me to show you real quick. I try to do hat. However, the rim of the hat is above several items while the back of the hat is below them. And so, you see, if I just drag and drop there, suddenly the ears are behind the hat, which isn't what I want. Now, the draw order by default for all items is 500. However, if you are to, let's say, go to the back hat and do uh, 4, 9, 8. Now, suddenly, even though it is above all these other items, it is shown below them. 
But that's also not quite what we want. Because, you see, it's, it's behind things it's not quite supposed to be behind. So you see, you go down to, in this case, the back hair, 2499. And then for the head, you also do 499. And then for the body, you do 498. Oh, goodness. Excuse me a moment. You might need to fiddle with the numbers a bit before you get what you're looking for. There we go. But yeah, as you can see, if you play with the draw order numbers, you can sort of control what items are shown over others. Now back to making the folders. Now, for the hair, you can put the hair all in one folder. However, I prefer to put them in separate folders. This would just be bangs or front hair. And then you can put these two together in side hair. The nose should get, get its own folder all to itself, just nose. And the head. And the body. And last but not least back the hair. Now, that, pop that in there. And there you go. Everything is organized. And now we think about the parameters. Parameters are essentially how you will manipulate the model. Now, for our purposes, you have, you'll start out with all these default parameters, and they don't do anything yet because you haven't really assigned them to do anything. However, some of these are already pre-programmed to do certain things, so you don't want to delete all of them for our purposes. For some models, you might want to delete all of them, but for us, we're going to keep some of them. So, delete angle Y, angle Z, IL smile, IR smile, then brow, L X, brow R X, brow L angle, brow R angle, brow L form, brow R form, mouth form, cheek, all these body ones, so body X, Y, and Z. And so, all you should have is angle X, IL open, IR open, eyeball X, eyeball Y, brow LY, brow RY, mouth open, breathing, hair move front, hair move side, and hair move back. Those parameters we deleted, they're not necessarily useless or anything. There's, it's just, in the free version of Live 2D, you can only assign two parameters to manipulate one object. So if you have more than that, you uh, you can't, essentially, you can't have more than that. It won't let you. And so I've broken this down to only the bare necessary parameters to make a functioning VTuber model. Unfortunately, this will lack a little bit of expression. Um, you can't, like, tilt your head from side to side. Um, and you also, like, the lip syncing won't be as accurate because you will only have the one shape for the mouth. However, otherwise, uh, these are the parameters you absolutely need, and you will still be able to get a nice and expressive model, expressive to an extent, that will work as a VTuber model. And now, another step is to go through and give every part mesh. It's, you can do this by hand using this tool here, where essentially you'll create lines to connect each part. However, personally, for our purposes, you don't need to do that. Instead, you can have them automatically made 
where you should do standard for pretty much every part except for the top eyes. I would do those in, I'll show you. Should do those in deformation heavy because you're going to need to deform the eyes a bit more than you would. And for this one, just keep doing standard for everything else. All right, and now with that out of the way, it's time to actually rig your model. So the first part we'll rig is angle X. This is essentially going to be the turning of your character's head from side to side. Your character's head will not tilt up and down due to the limitations on parameters. However, tilting from side to side is generally what you will be doing. So it should be fine enough. Now then, I usually like to start with the head. Now, you can deform with these various things by hand, like this, and you can just kind of grab these various points and do them like that. However, what I find easier for this part is to do a warp deformer, which essentially gives you a little more like control over exactly the shapes you're making. And this will help us make sort of the altered like shape of the chin as the head turns from side to side. What you want to do is select the warp deformer of head, hit this three green dots here, and you will have your various keyframes. For anyone familiar with animation, you know what keyframes are, but if not, keyframes are essentially the main poses of an animation. So this, the one in the middle, will be your default. Don't touch it, it's just your character's looking at the camera, completely default. And then to this side will be the character looking, well, to the side, whoops. To the side, like, to that side and then to this side, same thing. And so for your keyframes, you can get rid of the red box by pressing this button in case it starts getting in the way. By making the chin sort of go this way. Now this is going to look very strange at first because you've only moved this one part. Now I also like to squish in the sides a bit. Again, a lot of this is just thinking to yourself like, does this look good? Do I like this? Because what I think looks good might be different from what you think looks good, and that's fine. But remember, it's going to look very strange until you finish all of the parameters. So if you, if you look at your in-progress model and you go, this looks awful, don't worry, it will look better. You just need the, you just need to be patient and keep going. See, we've got it going this way, and then for the other side, we will basically do the same thing. And again, just kind of poke around with it until you get a result you like. All right. And now we will move the other parts of the face. What I like to do first is move the mouth. Now what you want to do to make sure you select both mouthpieces, because you can you'll probably only see one if your layers are set up like mine, do select all child objects. And still with angle X selected, click the green dots again. And now just you can select it and use your arrow keys. You can also drag and uh, drag it around. However, I like to use the arrow keys because then you can make sure it's a sort of smooth movement. But if you like the way uh, the way it looks when you move it around with your mouse better, that's fine. I see. That looks a little bit less strange. Now there's a mouth moving alongside the chin instead of just the chin sort of stretching from side to side. Then I'll move it this side. And there you go. You see, it's sort of 
starting to look a little more natural. It still looks it still looks uh weird. But again, it's starting to come together a little bit. And then now the nose. The nose is a big one. For a long time I kept the nose on the same layer as the face. And I would wonder like why do my models look so weird when they turn their heads? It's because of the nose. The nose is a little detail that makes a big difference. So make sure you line up the nose with where it would logically be when the head is tilted in that direction. It helps to line it up with the mouth and the chin. And there you go. As long as you ignore the hair and the eyes and everything else on the face, it's starting to actually look about right. Now then, for the eyes, because the eyes are so many moving parts, my advice is to do eyes, select all child objects, and then create create warp deformer of eyes. And now you can move all of the eye parts together, which is very helpful. So definitely, definitely do this. Now. the eyes can actually follow the head. If you want to, you can also sort of taper the warp deformer a bit to sort of reflect how eyes tend to like foreshorten a bit, if you want to. Um, I usually don't do that because the tilting of the head is so minor anyways that it Sometimes just looks kind of odd. But if you decide you like how it looks, then that is completely okay. Like I said, you should you should tinker around with your models a bit. Because just because I do it a certain way doesn't mean that's the way to do it. There could be a better way. Now then. Let's do the same thing with the brows. Select all child objects. And then do warp deformer of brows. And then again, hit the, uh, the green dots. And then over here. And there you go. Look at that. But there's still something missing. And that would be the hair. The hair would move as well, logically. And so, let's start with the bangs. The bangs would move ever so slightly, along with the other details of the face. Same with the bangs, or the side hair, more accurately. <laughs> oh, so many parts, I'm mixing them all up. <laughs> what you see... Take this, move it like that, move it like that. All right. Now you can see with the back hair and anything that's sort of on the back of the head, so I'll do something similar with the back of the hat. What you do is you actually move it opposite of how you moved every other part. So when you go to this, this uh, keyframe, instead of moving it this way, you move it this way. Because that looks far more natural. You see, there you go. Besides the ears and the, um, besides the ears and the hat, this does look like someone's head moving side to side. We'll worry about the neck a little bit later. Now, you can skip this part if your character doesn't have anything remotely resembling the ears or the hat. So I'm going to do those really quick. However, this may prove to be helpful. Now, one thing I notice is that you can see a little bit of the hair peeking out here. So what we're going to do is just move the hat up a little bit. All right, now time for the hat rim. Let's see. And this way. There we go. And the hat back. Uh, 
I like to do is rotate it a little bit. There we go. Now for the ears. And again, if your character has like horns or something or like anything on the head that's like sort of similar in shape to the ears, you can use the same sort of sort of uh, idea for moving them as well. See, once again, they move with the head. Do the same thing with the right ear. And now with the neck, as, uh, as my model has the neck attached to the body, uh, I have to do things a bit differently. But it shouldn't be too hard. You select this lasso tool up here. And essentially, you just roughly grab some of the, the dots around the neck. Then you go back to this, do the dots. Then you can just kind of move that bit around so that it attaches smoothly to the head as it turns. See, like that. All right, so now we have a head that moves. Now then, next we will do the eyes. The eyes are a tough part. They're, they're pretty tough, so it's okay if it takes a couple tries to sort of figure it out. Now then, so the eye default parameter should have the default be 1.0, so on this end right here. So that means that is the default position for the eyes, so this should be the open part, whereas uh, position 0, which is at this end, should be the closed. So let's go in there, and the quick way I like to do it is just flip it like that and move it up. And then you see, it closes like that. And now the lower eye, I like to sort of just squish up like that. And there you go. It creates an actually fairly natural looking blink effect. This is not sort of like the best way to do blinking, but it is the easiest way and it works. So it's the, the way to do it that I recommend. Now, as for the sclera, or the whites of the eyes, you're going to have to manipulate the, the, uh, the dots or the vertices manually for this one. You're just going to want to push them in. Push them in towards the top of the eye. Just ignore the iris for now. We'll get to that right after this. And look at that. See, like I said, it's not perfect. As you can see, there's a bit of the red poking out there. But this is the easiest way to do blinking. And so for purposes of just teaching how to make a very simple live 2D model, this is the easiest way to do it. And so it works for our purposes. Now you're probably wondering, well, how do I get the iris to sort of stay within the eye and that was actually easy what you do is go into your right uh solera copy the id which should be art mesh and then a number and go to the right iris and do clipping id copy and paste you do the same thing for the left eye and the left iris Oh, 
goodness. You have to hit enter after you make changes in this box. I always forget to do that. Otherwise, they won't save. Now, and you close the eye. Wherever the iris goes, it is now clipped to the Slara, so it only appears within the Slara. So that means even if your character's looking up, you won't see the top of the iris there. And it will now disappear with, along with the blinking. Now, next, we will work on the left eye, which is the roughly the same process be reversed. All right, now we have both eyes can blink. Now a quick thing you can do is go to modeling. Yes, go to modeling parameter and set both of these to be eye blinking. And while you're here, you can do mouth open for lip sync. Hit OK. All right, and now next, we'll do the movement of the eyes themselves, the irises. So you'll select eyeball Y and eyeball X, and then hit that little circular paperclip looking shape. Now these parameters are linked together. And you get a lot more control over how they move. You'll select these green dots again and you'll end up with a little like grid shape such as this. Now what you want to do is go to iris, select all child objects, and then hit the green dots. And now the irises can be moved. So what you do is you go over to this side. All right. And then to this side. And for up. And then down. Now, as you can see, however, the corners don't work, but that is a very easy thing to do. Go to parameter, synthesize corners, hit OK. So now you have eyes that move. And now we'll move on to the eyebrows. Eyebrows are very, very simple. Go to your left brow for brow L, Y. Hit the three green dots. Then for this, whoops, for this side, all you do is you move it down. And then for this side, you move it up. And you repeat the process for the right brow. Sort of eyeball it to make sure they move to roughly the same spots. There, now you have your eyebrows. All right, and now next, you do the mouth. Now the mouth can be a little bit tricky, so be sure to follow along carefully. So first, select your mouth closed option and select the mouth open parameter. This box should come up. If not, just keep clicking on it and eventually click on, click off, click over here. It'll come up eventually. It can be a bit finicky. Then select a single keyform and then move just a little bit and select another keyform now move to your mouth open image and do a keyform and here do a keyform well sure that's a mouth opening and closing but doesn't quite look good does it and so for this parameter that is close to the mouth being closed, go in and squish it down. Squish 
squish it down. There we go. Now it moves, not perfectly, but a bit more naturally. And then, so now we have a model that blinks, looks around, has an eyebrow that can, has eyebrows that can raise and lower, and can move the mouth, move the head, move everything, right? Well, there's still a few more steps if you want your model to look good. In the front, the hair move front, this is going to be where we start doing our physics. Physics will essentially mean that when the head moves, the hair actually sort of sways and bounces like hair often does. Now what you should do is make warp deformers for each section of hair. So a warp deformer of front bangs, deformer of side hair R, warp deformer of side hair L. Do the side hair separately, it makes it much easier. and warp deformer of back hair. All right, and for hair move front, it's fairly simple. Select your warp deformer, hit the green dots, and then sort of make it flow to the side of it. Just a little bit. And then to this side. See, it's sort of like the hair is swishing from side to side. Now, simply repeat the process with both of your side hairs. All right, and see, those will be your hair physics. Now, go into your modeling and go to Open Physics Scene Blending Settings. As you can see, it will show you your blinking, so you can check to see if how that looks. However, what we want to do is go to add to hair, head input, and physics model. I would say go with hair long if your hair is similar to in length to mine. Even though it seems short, I find that the long hair looks better. Ignore that. Now, what you do next is go to Output Settings, Add, Hair Move Front, Hair Move Side, and Hair Move Back. Now, as you can see, the hair moves and bounces. And you see, you can test how your model looks by doing just pressing play right there. And it will just start doing random animations, such as raising and lowering the eyebrows, talking, blinking, looking around. And you can sort of get a good look at what your model is going to look like in motion. And there you go. To export your model, just make sure you save it. I've already saved final version. And what you do is you export for runtime as Mach 3 file. And that Mach 3 file can be used in uh, VUP, which is a free program on Steam, which also supports Vueroid models. And I believe it also can be used in FaceRig and likely the face rig successor however vup is free so that is the one i recommend and so there it is that is your live 2d model made in not much time and hopefully preferably for free i hope you all enjoyed watching and i hope this was helpful make sure to follow me on twitch uh twitter 
and hit subscribe if you haven't. I post a lot about my art and animations and do various tutorials. And I hope you all have a lovely day. Bye-bye.